Lowndes County voters head to the polls. In an update on the state Supreme Court decision regarding the Lowndes County sanitation feud. We'll have these stories and more. Your News Valdosta starts now. Hello and welcome to News Vadasta. I'm Tichelle Williams. And I'm Hannah Hedges. Well, after weeks of early voting today, is the day to get your voice heard by voting. Voting kicked off at 7 this morning and will decide which candidates go to the runoff election on July 22nd. There are nine voting precincts set for voters in Lowndes County. Polls open for registration local city for registered local citizens at 7 this morning and will continue until 7 tonight. If you aren't sure exactly where you have to vote, you can check with the Lowndes County Board of Elections, but expect them to be very busy. Yesterday, the state Supreme Court heard from Lowndes County officials in Deep South Sanitation over garbage pickup in Lowndes County. It started with the exclusive agreement between the County Commission and Advanced Disposal that limited the business of Deep South Sanitation. Due to a ruling in December 2013 by Southern Circuit Judge Harry J. Altman, Deep South Sanitation was granted permission to continue garbage pickup regardless of the agreement between the County Commission and Advanced Disposal. As both sides met with the state Supreme Court, Lowndes County officials insisted on appealing the ruling in order to continue their agreement with advanced disposal. Lowndes County officials said they wanted to move forward with the appeal to establish the validity, the validity of Lowndes County Solid Waste Management Ordinance and to validate Lowndes County Franchise Agreement with Advanced Disposal. According to Deep South's attorney, Rob Plum, it's unlikely any such ruling will be made this summer and could take up to a year. A Florida murder suspect has been arrested in Lowndes County. Authorities say the murder of Frank Carl Jones III took place in Jasper, Florida on Sunday evening after midnight. The suspect was identified as Daffodrone Lamar Allen. Officials say immediately after the shooting, the Lowndes County Sheriff's Office was notified by Hamilton P County. Investigators went to the Lake Park area where, where Allen was seen walking in the parking lot of a motel. Allen was arrested and faced a charge of second degree murder. A Rimmerton man whose body was found earlier this year is now considered to be a murder victim. Keith Oliver Irvin's body was found Friday morning on February 7th behind an abandoned trailer on Burnt Church Road southeast of Lakeland. The Remerton Police Department conducted an investigation after Irvin was reported missing in late January. After a routine autopsy, the GBI ruled that Irvin's death was a homicide. Anyone with information about this case is asked to call the Laner County Sheriff's Office. A 22-year-old Vadasta man was robbed around 4.30 in the morning last Friday. Police reports state that the young man was home at the time when a group of three people, all wearing masks, entered his home using a gun for assistance. The robbery took place on 2200 block of Pine Cliff Drive. The resident was robbed of $822, two iPhones, a purse, and an Xbox One. The police department have not yet released any suspects that may be involved. For just $100, you could own an historic downtown property in a raffle drawing. The Barron County Development Authority, Barron County Chamber of Commerce and Nashville Main Street programs have teamed up to present individuals an opportunity to win a piece of Barron County land. The Miller Building built in er in the early 1900s is a two-story, 10,000 square foot building. The Burren County Chamber of Commerce will only be selling 500 tickets. This drawing will be held Thursday, June 5th. The City of Valdosta announced the cancellation of the City Council meeting scheduled for Thursday afternoon. The meeting was canceled due to a lack of agenda items. Citizens can attend work session meetings to hear agenda items and present ideas relative to the agenda. 
Work sessions take place on the first Tuesday before the first City Council meeting of each month. The next City Council meeting work session is scheduled for June 3rd with a City Council meeting on June 5th at 5.30 p.m. When we come back, we'll learn about funeral service options for cherished pets. And we'll tell you about a program that recognizes some of Vadasa's most talented residents. Stay with us. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Welcome back to News Valdosta. Mick Lane's Funeral Homes has a service that not only puts your loved ones at peace, but now your beloved pets at peace as well. It's a new type of service for this area, and News Valdosta reporter Greg McCarthy has more. Yay! With the successful grand opening of Pets at Peace, many Valdosta pet owners showed up to see how Pets at Peace can honor their deceased pet and what type of ways owner Britt McLean manages to commemorate the memory of our four-legged family members, such as portraits, various sized cremation urns, and also small trinkets to remember our loved one. So now we'll talk to Mr. McLean about how he got started with Pets at Peace. The goals of Pets at Peace is to bring a higher level of uh, service in this area to the families of this area and to bring more options in the area of memorialization for pets to the families in this area. And yes, it is a, I believe it is a wonderful extension of what we're already doing to serve people at the loss of a loved one. Over the years, we've had a number of requests from the families that we have served uh, to serve them with uh, cremating their pets. There's not a local service currently and I investigated this and found that this would be a good way to start new relationships with people in our community and serve folks that we already know. I'm Greg McCarthy for News Valdosta. The Valdosta Chamber of Commerce's Metro One program has recognized 18 young and talented professionals at its four under 40 event. At the event, the finalists were accredited for their accomplishments in their Pacific career fields and community service. Several of the nominees for the awards included business owners, leaders in education, and the health care field and financial services. This event takes place in the city of Valdosta once a year. Graduating high school seniors Joseph Ruse, Robert Kors, Austin Ogburn, and Allison Peters have all earned scholarships from the Moody Thrift Shop at the Moody Air Force Base. Due to their excellent academics, volunteerism, and written essays judged by members of the Lowndes County Retired Teachers Association, the students received a cumulative total of 3,000. The scholarship certificates were funded through sales and donations at the thrift shop. According to a new report published in the American Association for Cancer Research Journal, lung, pancreas, and liver cancers will be the top cancer killers by 2030. Researchers say that the obesity could affect patients' outcomes. Cancers linked to obesity like pancreatic cancer are not as severe in countries where obesity is less of an issue. Due to, an, due to the aging population, the number of cancer cases is expected to rise for the next 16 years. The Red Cross Blood Mobile collected 17 units Monday afternoon. Reporter Joy Cohn has more on the story. I'm standing here in front of the American Red Cross bus where Supervisor Jason Haskin is going to tell us a little bit more about what the American Red Cross does and why is it so important for us to give blood. 
The American Red Cross is a nationwide organization that is involved with uh, disaster relief. So anytime that there's a disaster, uh, hurricanes, tornadoes, we're involved with relief uh, for those areas. Also, we're involved with blood services, which is what we're doing today. We're having a blood drive to replenish blood that is used up in the hospitals. Um, every three seconds, somebody needs blood. And uh, what we do is we have donors that come out, give uh, the gift of life, and that helps a patient in need. I feel this is my duty because um, you know, I've had some relatives that's been to the hospital that got blood transfusions before, so I figured I'd, this would be a way of giving back or for those who've given blood in the past for them. So. Blood can't be man, it's not man-made. It's something that is, uh, can only be given by a donor. Um, or not by a donor, by, well, yeah, by a donor. So it's not something that we can recreate. It's just something that somebody can give. And if uh, we don't have blood on the shelves, then people can't get surgeries. People won't survive from uh, any kind of accidents or anything like that. So without blood, uh, it's the gift of life. Now that you see how important it is to give the gift of life to another human in need, we encourage you to give back in the next blood drive to your community. I'm Joy Cohn with News Valdosta. Fifteen individuals are competing to become the state school superintendent. With six Democrats and nine Republicans, the races will be the most crowded during today's primary election. The seat is being vacated by Superintendent John Barge. Alan Fort, superintendent of the Quitman County School System, is running as a candidate in that race. The Second Harvest Food Bank, along with volunteers from Wild Adventures Theme Park, will fill disaster relief packs for the fourth year this Wednesday. Second Harvest of South Georgia, the leading domestic hunger relief organization in the region, has packed relief boxes for the last seven years in preparation for disaster situations. Wild Adventures staff members have been on hand to assemble the kits containing Abbott Nutrition products, specifically chosen to combat hunger and de dehydration in babies, small children, and seniors. When we come back, we'll take a look at our local weather with Joy Cohn. Stay with us. Body language. Without saying a word, it can tell you so much. Like someone is having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time. Time to call 911 immediately. The sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. Learn the body language, the sudden signs, and spot a stroke fast. Get your f***ing You're not f***ing in here. Yes, I am. No, no, no. Every day, kids witness bullying. Why are you stabbing me with it? No, no. They want to help, no. but don't know how. Oh, you Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. Welcome back to News Vodasta. Now let's take a look at the weather with Joy Cohn. Joy, what's the forecast? Thanks, Hannah. Well, if you didn't get to enjoy the sunny weather yesterday, you have another chance to get out and enjoy it today. The high will be 86 degrees, a little warmer than yesterday with a few light and varied winds that will help cool us down. Tonight will drop to a low 63 degrees with nice clear skies, so don't cancel any outdoor plans for tonight. And to be on the safe side, grab a light sweater just in case it gets a little chilly. Tomorrow's forecast includes a hot 90 degrees with a low of 66 degrees, so it feels like summer is here. 
the UV index reads 11 again, so make sure to protect yourself from sunburn by using plenty sunblock and you can always count on a big hat or umbrella for shade. The pollen count is low, so it's the perfect day to sit on the back porch and sip on some ice cold lemonade. You could also get in the garden and plant those pretty flowers. Back to you ladies at the news desk. Thanks Joy. When we come back, the Lady Blazers will open up a national championship tournament. Don't go away. Thank you for calling your GED pep talk center. All right, now are you ready for your GED pep talk? Being nervous is okay. It just shows that you're serious about getting your diploma. All right, listen, we all need a little nudge sometimes. I don't function without coffee in the morning, but it is going to take more than a double mochaccino to help you here. A lot of things are scary. Heck, I'm scared of clowns. No quiero ir. Then, no lo puedo hacer. Quiero ir. Then, lo voy a hacer. DMC, liking your pep talk style. Just keeping it real, Deb. Just keeping it real. <laughs> Lower! Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org. I got my MBA online at VSU. As a working mom who travels on business, I needed an MBA program that fit my schedule and allowed me to balance both my work and home life. VSU's Web MBA was perfect. I was able to spend time with my family in the evenings and then complete my assignments. My MBA is one of my greatest accomplishments. It was hard work, but I would do it again in a heartbeat. Don't wait. Start your MBA today. Welcome back. Now let's check in with Ashley Mooneyham for our local sports. Ashley? Thanks, Michelle. This Thursday, the Lady Blazers softball team will open the NCAA Division II National Championship Tournament. The Blazers recently became the first team to have success against Tampa in the South II Regional and hope to repeat this this weekend at Virginia. But Austin State has one of the top offenses in the eight-team double elimination bracket with 85 home runs to go along with a 334 average and 425 runs. This is Valdosta State's third straight appearance at the national tournament and they will be departing from Steele's Diamond at 4 p.m. today. Today in baseball, the Georgia Bulldogs will play Mississippi State at the Hoover Met Stadium in Hoover, Alabama in the first round of the SEC tournament. This is definitely a comeback for Georgia after not playing in the SEC last year. The winner of this game will face USC on the Wednesday night's game. Last night, the Atlanta Braves opened a four-game series by playing the Milwaukee Brewers at Turner Field. The Braves experienced a good night, winning 9-3. The Brewers pitched very well, but hit less while the Braves concluded 15 hits and 9 runs. The win is a good start for the Braves, who are up for their second play against the Brewers tonight. It has been seven weeks since Tiger Woods had surgery to alleviate a pinched nerve in his back. And after the seven weeks of slow recovery, he still isn't able to make a full swing. Although he can chip and putt the ball, Woods is uncertain as to when he will be able to return to competitive golf. This would appear to rule out next month's U.S. Open. Lowndes County High School senior Brian Bell has not only been committed to playing football for Florida State University, but has also been recently nominated to play in the U.S. Army All-American Bowl. Bell made 500... 55 tackles with 10.5 tackles for loss and 3.5 sacks a year ago when he was in all-region 5A. Bell has also been named one of the top 10 linebackers in the state by the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Bell is one of the top 400 senior nominees in the country and only 90 will be invited to the All-American Bowl. This selection process will announce the finalists from September through December. After three former football players for the Valdosta State Blazers signed a free agents for the NFL last weekend, another two Blazers now have the chance to, to chase their dreams to the NFL. This week, Dominique Wheeler and Jeremy Grable will receive an invitation to try out for both the New England Patriots and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Falcons president and CEO Rich McKay, NFL commissioner Roger Goodell, and Falcons owner Arthur Bank 
were all smiles Monday night at the official groundbreaking ceremony of the new stadium for the Falcons. The crowd, ha the crowd was abuzz with excitement and anticipation as they took in a 3D rendition of the new facility. To conclude the ceremony, officials shoveled dirt at the, at the Georgia International Plaza. The new stadium is scheduled to open in 2017. That's your sports for today. Back to the ladies at the news desk. Thanks, Ashley. When we come back, we'll give you an update on how to vote for the finalist for Who Wants to Be a DJ. And a memorial will be held to recognize local educators. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Seven thousand high school students drop out every school day. That's a line of desks more than four miles long. We can keep students in school. Visit boostup.org and take the first step. All right, give me a spot. You know my motto, safety first. They could be dangerous. I think we should call animal control. Animal control? To be safe. Don't worry. Just... I got this. It's a new motto. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Welcome back to News Valdosta. The online voting polls have opened for the top five finalists on who wants to be a DJ. Have you voted for one of the contestants to Who Wants to Be a DJ? Well, there is still time to go online at Black Crow Media and vote once per day and choose one of the top five finalists. Online, you are able to view each finalist's demos and vote on who you believe to have what it takes to be Valdosta's new top radio personality. The winners will be chosen on May 23rd. A memorial service is being held for local retired teachers on Sunday at 3 p.m. at the St. Barnabas Episcopal Church. The service is to show appreciation and recognition for their life's accomplishments. This memorial service is open to the public. The Valdosta Lounge Retired Educators invites everyone to attend. Valdosta State University has received the Georgia Trust Award for the renovation of Ashley Hall. This award is a nonprofit organization to recognize and celebrate the preservation of buildings throughout the state of Georgia. Ashley Hall was built in 1921, which makes it the third oldest building on university campus. It wasn't always a building filled with classrooms and offices. Originally, the building contained a dining room and kitchen, but then was transformed into a chapel in 1921. The recent improvements took two years to complete and now is known as the Department of History and the, and the Department of Philosophy and Religious Studies. That's our show for today. Thanks for watching News Vadasta. I'm Tisha Williams. And I'm Hannah Hedges. We'll see you again tomorrow.